One of the first things people think about when you mention self-sufficiency, uh, living off the land, producing your own food, is chickens. And if you're going to keep chickens, you need somewhere for them to sleep in, or in the case of Ireland, somewhere for them to escape the daily downpour of rain. Um, and I have just finished making um, a chicken coop, which you can see in the background over there, um, being monitored and patrolled by Moss, my dog. Um, and in this video, I just want to give you a quick tour of the chicken coop, um, show you why I made it the way I did. Um, which I have christened, by the way, the Mossy Bottom Ski Coop Mark 1, for reasons which will become apparent, I promise. So one of the first things that you need to decide when you're figuring out how to make a chicken coop for yourself is whether it's going to be a mobile structure or a permanent structure. This is a mobile coop, which means it's designed to be moved around. It can actually be carried by two people fairly easily, um, you wouldn't want to do it every day or, or even every week, but if it's once or twice a year, it's really not too bad. And that's deliberate. It's not rooted into the ground. There's no concrete base. Um, it's designed so it can be mobile. And the principle is um, the chickens stay in this area for about a year and all their poop fertilizes the soil. And then this soil is used next year to grow vegetables in and the chickens move to another plot um, where they can peck away at old vegetable roots and seeds and um, bits of leaves and things that have been left there and enrich that soil for the following year. So the enclosed area um, of the coop is about um, 1 meter 20 wide, about 4 foot, by about uh, 1 meter deep, 3 foot, and 1 meter high. In total it's about 1 meter 75 high, 5.5, 6 foot, something like that. Um, which is about big enough for uh, eight, maybe ten hens if you cram them in, but um, optimally more like four to six, something like that, which is easily enough for a small holder if you're, you just want eggs for your own family. You don't need more chickens than that, really. Um, it's made from uh, treated um, pine, which I just got from my local timber merchant. Um, and there's a nice galvanized steel roof to keep the rain out, keep them nice and cozy in the winter. Um, there's a few extra bits, a few nuts and bolts here and there, a bit of wire mesh, a bit of plywood in there, um, but nothing fancy, really nothing fancy at all. You could make this from um, pallet boards if you wanted to save a bit of money, um, or recycled timber. Um, but this cost me about a hundred euro for the for the materials to make it so really not that much at all So at the front we have a very sturdy heavy door which can't easily be pushed open by Any hungry foxes trying to or mink trying to fight their way in um, And a nice simple ladder just made from a plank with bits of hazel branch attached To allow the chickens particularly when they're young. They're not particularly good at um balancing and negotiating tight spaces so this is just to help them out a bit but I find in the morning when I open the door and let them out they just fly out they have no interest in using the ladder generally um, and obviously as you can see this is a an elevated coop um, meaning the sleeping area is raised up above the ground and chickens will thank you for that if you can make um, make something like this because um, being jungle birds they naturally their instinct is to roost high up off the ground, um, so they'll be much happier if you can give them a, an elevated coop rather than something directly on the ground. Um, and the other advantage of it is it frees up a lot of space underneath um, for shade during the day, if it's sunny like it is now. Um, believe it or not, occasionally the sun does shine in Ireland and your chickens need a bit of cover from it, um, lest they should get sunburned. Um, and it's just somewhere nice for them to roost. And it's also potentially protection from birds of prey. If one of them sounds the alarm call because um, something's flying over, they'll all just dart under here and, and hide. So here I am at the back of the coop. Um, oh, bit of a fight going on there. As you can see, we've got two um, fully opening doors um, for access in the morning to collect eggs and clean the coop as well. Um, one handy feature is that there's no lip between the floor and the edge, which 
makes it kind of easier for cleaning out. You can just get a brush in and sweep everything out directly into a wheelbarrow underneath. So here we are from the back with the doors fully open. You can see I've got nesting boxes on both sides, internal nesting boxes. Now I went with those instead of the traditional kind of sticky out nesting boxes that you see on most coops, because frankly they're much easier to make, uh, much easier to clean, and chickens will use them as long as you don't disturb them while they're laying. So you have to make sure that the chickens are let out every morning before you open the doors at the back. Um, filled with straw, they're nice generous sizes, um, not too tight, nice and big. We've got two on each side. And bear in mind that chickens will share nesting spaces, so you don't need one, as long as they're a generous size, you don't need one per hen. One per every couple of hens is probably um, is okay. One thing to bear in mind is that the uh, nesting boxes are completely removable on both sides. Um, they can be taken out for cleaning. And once they've been taken out, the floor here, which is plywood, um, can be taken out as well either for cleaning or if it needs replacing after a few years, um, it's very, very easy to do that. I didn't want to screw anything down too permanently inside um, because things do t tend to get damaged and, and worn out and need replacing um, or certainly a good thorough clean um, once or twice a year. In terms of roosting space, um, I have somewhat of a chicken expert with me at the moment doing some voluntary work. She um, grew up with chickens, keeping them as pets, and she has advised me that um, it's a good idea in a coop to have both a roosting bar, like this one, which is just a hazel pole, um, and a shelf as well. Some chickens like to sleep on a shelf, and others like to sleep on a bar with their toes hooked around it. Um, so it's a good idea to have both, um, and at different levels as well. So another really important feature in here is the ventilation. Um, which in the case of this coop is just the spaces on the sides directly under the roof. Um, and instead of putting boards in there, which would have been tricky to cut, um, I just added a bit of um, wire mesh on the inside with some staples holding it down on both sides. So we've got a nice flow of air going through there. Um, no predators can get in. Um, and they're not, the air doesn't blow directly onto the chickens when they're perching. Um, or in the nesting boxes or on the shelves, um, which is just what you want. But do include ventilation if you're designing a chicken coop because um, they produce a lot of moisture chickens and the humidity can really build up, as can the ammonia levels. So you do need a good source of ventilation, especially in the winter as well. So on the subject of drafts in the night, um, insulation is another thing that people talk about with coops. Should you insulate or not? I chose not to. Um, I don't live in a place where it's particularly or excessively cold in the winter here in Ireland. Um, it, you know, it does get below freezing from time to time. Um, but as long as you choose a breed of chickens that are hardy, like the Rhode Island Reds here, um, they should easily be able to cope with winter temperatures. Um, insulating is only really worth it if there's an internal heat source within the coop, or at least that was my reasoning. Um, because if there's no heat source, there's no heat to trap. So it's not gonna make much difference to, temp to the temperature in the coop, unless you've got some sort of heater in there. And if you've got a heater in there, that's, you know, that's expensive to run. And it's also potentially quite dangerous um, if there's no one monitoring it and you've got lots of fluffy hens hopping around with combustible feathers, so, um, it's not a bad thing if, you, if you're making an extravagant, permanent coop that's much larger than this, then maybe you'd consider insulating it and installing some heaters, because your chickens may then lay during the winter, um, whereas if it's quite cold, they won't lay eggs during the winter, um, which is a consideration. Um, but in this kind of coop, I don't think insulation's really necessary or an advantage. Now the reason that I've called this the ski coop is because it has these giant wooden beams running across the ground um, which kind of make it look like it's on skis, at least that's what my friend thinks. Um, hence ski coop. Um, and the reason that I put those on is we get really strong uh, north-south blowing winds, um, particularly in the winter and, and late autumn. Um, and 
the coupe's kind of top heavy so I wanted some way of increasing the stability and I figured these skis would work really well they stick out about um, two and a half feet on either either end the front and the back and they're supported there's some stabilizers to make them a bit stronger so if we get a really big storm blowing that way or this way it'll stop the coop from blowing over um, which is obviously really important especially at night if all my little chickens are in there sleeping away laying their eggs it wouldn't be very nice if they got um, blown on their side speaking of chickens I'm getting pecked out here by one or two um, so that's the reason for the for the skis and it kind of gives it the appearance of a giant chicken um, or a Trojan chicken I guess with all the, the little chickens hiding away inside um, but I think it looks pretty cool one final feature that I'll quickly point out is the guttering which we added here because I kept banging my head on the edge of the galvanized roof and um, to avoid serious injury and trips to the emergency room I thought a bit of guttering was a good idea it also means that potentially I could um, attach some kind of rainwater collection system at the side and use the water from that for the chickens um, or for cleaning the coop um, I haven't figured out quite how to do that yet without them contaminating the, the water if it's a bucket or something they tend to sit on the edge and poop into the water so I need a bit more thought to figure that out but guttering is always a good idea um, on a chicken coop and that's it for the mossy bottom chicken coop or ski coop I should say mark one who knows if it'll be a mark two three four five over the next few years quite possibly um, I do tend to modify and improve things as I go so it could well happen but um, I really hope this video has been um, informative for some of you if, if anyone's out there thinking about making their own chicken coop and was looking for a bit of inspiration um, and a huge thank you to everyone who's watched and subscribed um, there's more videos to come I promise the next one will be the one that I talked about at the end of the last video um, in which I talk about my motivation for moving here and what it's all about why I'm here what I'm trying to create um, and why I gave up my old life to be here uh, for the moment though thanks again for watching and uh, bye for now